Hello family, how you doing? Welcome to my channel, King Heart. I am just sitting in my dining room, you know, sitting at the table and, um, you know, just relaxing, you know. Today is Father's Day, you know, and uh, everything. And it's a holiday, but also Juneteenth. And I wanted to talk about that again. I know I made one video about it, but I want to talk about it one more time. Because our family and our people don't know agreeing with this has put us in a hard way of what we're actually deserving and what we need. Juneteenth is a holiday. You give a, a black people a holiday. Now, I was celebrating Juneteenth last year. Before black people, a lot of black, black, a lot of us was already celebrating because we understand it. But it really disappointing, and it surfaces that now we got people that we all know at the grassroots in the new voice of black media. We already understood what we were up against when we started the reparations talk. There are Jewish people. 80-year-old ladies that Gail King just did a video of the other day who's cashing reparation checks to survive. Right now, these people are cashing in reparation checks to survive. Groups in the United States. We got immigrants here that just get $15,000 so that they can go out where, where they want to purchase an apartment, pay down on that, um, pay down on a new car, get some insurance, breathe a little bit. So they got incentives from our government. That's our money that they're passing around. And the reason it's ours is because they haven't been given to us. And we pay taxes. We, we were slaves in the country. So when you're out there agreeing to this Juneteenth, black folks on top of cars, I don't discourage us having a prideful moment of symbolic gestures according to who we were. However, I do if it's on a chessboard against us. So we got black people out here conceding that this is victory. I want to explain what this like. For us to be celebrating Juneteenth, Without able to pay our car insurance. And I'm talking to professionals too. Without being able to have the incentives of cushion through policy, police protection, we're conceding. We're saying that it's okay. This president, Biden, is very dangerous, man. He's manipulative. You give us a holiday according to slavery. But you don't give us what it takes to be free from slavery. Black people, listen, you are still enslaved. We are enslaved economically and politically. We are still slaves. We haven't been given the things that make people free. Money. Checks. To live. It makes a difference. I went with an example. I'm kind of pissed. But I'm going to say this. I went with an example last week. The example is. If you see a group of people out fighting. You know. Ready to harm each other. And they just going at it. Black folks. Ah, nigga, get out of my way. No, that's my girlfriend. No, you stole this. I didn't have a hundred dollars for my life being. You just took this. Oh, you keep asking for a cigarette. You need to go. Uh, everything. She on drugs anyway. I don't like your mama because she on drugs anyway. All she do is drugs. She never gave y'all nothing. Y'all always coming over my house to get something to eat. Everything. Black folks are 
which is poverty, and it's adjacent to crime. Somebody gonna commit a crime in a minute. Somebody gonna get shot. Or people mad already, and that kind of person out there arguing always make enemies. So we got gangs, all kind of stuff formed from that. Folks having sex with each other, all kind of stuff come from being in poverty. But if you walk in that crowd and you say, hey, wait a minute. What are y'all arguing about? This ain't none of your business. This ain't, no, I'm trying to help y'all. Get out of my face. What, what are y'all arguing about? And then all of a sudden, I or a person say, well, it's 20 of, of you guys here arguing. I want to stop you from arguing, but I have to do it this way. If everybody listen up, I'm sure you would like this. And you tell all the people, if y'all, you know, if I cut y'all a $20,000 check a piece, or maybe 50000 or 10000 will you please stop arguing? Do you think they'll continue to argue? Or do you think they will stop and say, wait a minute, ho, oh, whoa. Maybe some of the people who were arguing will be laughing with each other, saying, did he just say that? Wait a minute, girl, I'm mad at you, but hold on. Hey, bro, he just said $20,000. No, 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 no. Me and you not finna fight right now. So when you get the money and somebody say, I'm hungry. And out of those 20 people, there's a lady in there. She said, well, don't worry about it. You know, just go to the store and y'all buy something to drink and I'll cook. Now you start having community store for me because you have tangibles to work with. You got things that make people comfortable. The way the society runs it ain't all about money, but it's a lot about what it can do. So you got all of this going on and say, oh, yeah, girl, you know, I was worried about my medical bills, but I think I'm going to pay $2,000 on that because, you know, I can't take my daughter, my daughter to the doctor last week, so I'm going to pay $2,000 on my medical. Oh, yeah, you better do that. And then before the man leave and say, well, if y'all do good with this, you know, also y'all can go to a, a certain bank and get into housing programs and try to run a business. And maybe you can get loans for that if you return that. This is what, oh, really? We can do that too? Okay. But you got to dress well on Monday morning and come down to the bank, Wells Fargo or Chase or whatever, and they got a program set up for you guys so you can try to get into it. Oh, okay. But you got to hold on to at least $1,000. So we can, wow. This is what they're doing for immigrants. They're buffing them. That's why we're still in slavery. Y'all don't know what's going on. State legislators do. Our politicians know. They don't think we care. So our politicians are basically writing us out, getting paid so they can have a life and the rest of black society don't care. So our politicians not practice their preservation. Now, let me tell you what happens in terms of us not having these comfortabilities. We remember remain in province. Remember when you're in province, we remain committing crimes. We remain unimportant and irrelevant on the bottom in every way possible. So we getting shot by the police on arm, different things like that, because the United States does not protect non-policy and non-wealth, and black people don't have policy. And what policy we do have have not been implemented. We supposed to get a 40 acres in the mule, or what's equivalent to it. They haven't even begun the process. No, they probably can't just all of a sudden give it all to us right away, but they can begin the process. Like the Jews constantly getting stuff all the time. The Indians, native people saying, so what? Cherokee has to pay when Ford used Ranger and Cherokee. They got casinos. They got a development that recycles them and that buffers them into a living situation that throttles how the United States have our liberties set up. That we don't have. We are still slaves. And we got black people I'll celebrate June team. That's what's going on. 
And that's what we know at the grassroots. That's what we know the new voices of black media. That's what we pay attention to in the media apparatus that we created from our passion and our intellect. So you got us running around taking little incentives like this and looking at it as a big, it's a big gesture. It is. And it's a cloud, it's a cloudy, uh, cloudy, muddy in the waters of what's really deserving and what's really due upon dire situation. So this is what we doing. We are sleeping giant. Wake up, black people. Wake up. It's a bigger picture. A, a, a whole lot bigger picture. So, now, we got all of this going on. We got all of this going on. When well, you're in province, you're still fighting each other. You're still killing each other. You can't get lawyers in the courthouse. You don't have any hate crime bills. So, if somebody want to commit a hate crime on you, they can't get a punish to the full extent of the law necessarily because government has not gave you that incentive and that policy. Government is not giving that to you. He's giving it to Asians. People who were not slaves in this country. He has given it to other groups. So if Karen or whoever called the police, 911 use a prank call, you cannot say, Okay, it hasn't been implemented that she's committing a hate crime and that this is a problem and a systemic problem from the over office. But he gave you Juneteenth. He gave you Juneteenth. But he gave everybody else policy, protection, and money, and economics. So all these people running around with a $15,000 check they can give their children money. They can go buy a car. That's a breath. It ain't a lot of money. But they also got companies and businesses. The Latinos own businesses. Those who come in our country jump on board with the rest of their community. They have communities in Atlanta. They have communities in Texas. They own businesses. The Arabs and the East Indians own our liquor stores and gas stations. All in the crevice of down home Mississippi. It ain't never happened there. It used to be just in places like Detroit, New York, and Chicago. But now it's all over the place. And they have told you that you have been liberated, black people, because you got Juneteenth. But you don't own no businesses. You don't have no bank to partner with you who insured your body as a slave and made money from you which and giving to other people from other countries. We just gave Israel an allowance. What, $50 billion or somebody? Asians from Asia that slaves built this country that who still pay taxes that are still in slavery. We are in slavery still. Political, economic, industrial slavery. And we also in a psychological slavery. Very much so. Our social construct is like crabs in a bucket in the, mass to, in the masses of us, but not totally all of us because some of us understand the revolutionary mindset. Some of us understand intellectual education and not, not necessarily um, educated by society and what they want us to be because they do have a, 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 a system set up for us to, you know, to subscribe to. And, and that's called, what that's called? That's called um, institutionalized education. That's where our politicians are. That's why they slaves. They are political slaves. They are slaves with incentives, with homes and houses that are better than the rest. It's like an overseer. To tell the rest of the slaves, you go work, you had enough. We are satisfied. But they get paid. Overskill salary. But the masses of black people and community is swamped with East Indian and Asian restaurants on their corners 
who have been given loans and who are right now have been given buffer in millions of dollar policy while you get a holiday. I mean, while you get Juneteenth. You don't understand. This is very real. So wake up. So we got crime where people having babies, can't take care of babies. Yes, there's a lot of us black people who are educated. My family got a lot of education. We, you know, people go get good jobs. Mm -hmm. But can you put a roof on your mother's house? Can you have a house built for someone in the family who's lesser? Can you send somebody in the family $1,000 in case they're in dire situation? I don't care if you do make $70,000 a year, $100,000 a year. You have a lifestyle out here that you have to afford. And you cannot pay reparations as a black person to the whole family. We don't share wealth. It's a team sport. And it has been given to every group except for us. We're still in forms of slavery. That's why I came here to do the talk. Thank you for joining me. I'm King Hart. Black people, get out of damn slavery and stand for yourselves. Because at the grassroots and in the new voice of black media, we are standing, we are a sleeping giant, and we're going to wake our community up. Thank you for joining me. King Hart.